Hello everyone, I am Nutrix and today we're going to talk about Shaper. Shaper is an iOS synthesizer. It's a cool one. Honestly, it sounds good. That's the first reason we want to use one. It's uh, AUV3, so it works in all the DAWs that we expect it to play. It's also standalone, so you can actually just use it. Uh, my setup right now, I have the Microlab connected to a little USB hub and connected to my iPhone with a dongle like this. I'm gonna run it off my iPhone to show you how screen efficient this synth is. And it's really interesting because there's a lot of hidden feature in this. When you look at it, it looks to be quite simple in a way. Okay, so what do we have here? You have oscillator A, B, noise. When you click on the name A, B, and noise, you actually have that little section changing. At the bottom, you've got filter and routing. If you go filter and routing, well, the filter, you click on it, you have high pass, low pass, and bend pass, but there's a drive on it, which is a really cool thing. I, and I really love having a drive in the filter because you have that aggressive tone to it. So the little part that is interesting here is, okay, I just saw that cutoff value moving left and right. How do I assign this? There's no value anywhere. Well, if you want to know what's in, you know, the cutoff assignment, you double tap on the filter button and then you got filter cutoff. Well, you see envelope B is assigned to that and, and LFO A is assigned also to that. And then this, this value here, you can decide how much. The envelope, it's on one way, so it's going to bring it up and down, whereas the LFO is vibrating on each side. And you can say, well, I just want it to be on one side, like this, or I want it to be on the, you know, like that, just on one side, or both sides. So, and if you don't want it anymore, you go remove and remove, and they're gone. If you want an assign again, oh, that's a cool thing. You, think, you click on the name of envelope, you see I can drag it, and I drop it on cut off, and then I say how much I want. Same thing with the LFO. I click on the LFO and drag it and drop it on cut off again. I can actually take LFO B and drive it on, drag it on resonance. No resonance here. See this one is changing differently. So these two, so that is the hidden feature in this because this is really cool. I mean, you can just drag and it, it doesn't take another window. It doesn't take more space. It's just like you just click on it and drag it to, I don't know, the volume. And then it also affects the volume now. You know, really cool, really quick to do. This is for oscillator A. You can actually do the same thing for the B if you want to. And oh, this, here we go. If you want to have some noise, let's bring the, some noise. Let's bring some noise. Yeah, <laughs> that's a flashback. Yeah. So very quick to use, very fast to adapt all this. One of the cool thing is when you click on the uh, LFO, you can actually design it. You can double tap to add another node if you want, double tap. So you can create these very complex LFO, you know, let's keep the, f well, I've got too much stuff happening, but yeah, you get, and let's actually double tap this, get rid of this one, and then you're gonna have, This is really cool. If I double tick, see, this is a really bizarre thing. You heard that the LFO is doing is going faster and slower. It's because LFO B is controlling the speed of LFO A, and then you have that. This is just fun. So if I get rid of this, 
Now it's just LFOA having the same speed all the time. And if you want it to be less in the an amount, you can change the amount by just bringing down the amount. Here. So this is really, really cool. Um, you have the grid. It shows you the grid at the back you want it to have. And then you go, what's the grid for? Well, the snap is interesting. So there's a little snap button here. Take off this. Actually, when you move it, now it's going to snap to these values easily. You know. So if you have this, and you know, well, I want this to be snapped here, and I want this one to be snapped here. So now it will follow the amount that you decided. So this is pretty cool. So really complex LFOs that you can actually design. Very, uh, the shape of the envelope, really powerful. I mean, you've got controls here that you don't see often in you know, software synth, especially on the iOS. You have uh, control at the bottom for the keyboard. And you have another section for effects. Uh, you've got three slots of effects. When you click on it, you have a list of bit crusher, chorus, delay, distortion, filter. So you can have another filter if you want. Phaser and reverb, and I mean, actually, to have you hear them, let's click on some of the sounds. Let's say you have a bass sound. So you've got some bit crushing on this one. sound it sounds good it sounds round it sounds analogish you know it leads then you can hear the reverbs So they're really clean. So you get plenty of really cool. Really cool synth, quick to use, powerful ways to use it. I mean, the assignment of the matrix of modulation, the fact that you can actually, you know, just slide it and drop it really is a powerful thing. The only thing that I would like to see change in this thing is the fact that the LFO, you see, every time I press a key, it starts from the beginning. Every time I press a key, one, 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 one. The LFO is, is re-triggered. It's key triggering every time. And this is something I don't like. Personally, this, it becomes a just another envelope because an envelope is triggered every time you press a key. What I like about LFOs is they're just free running. They're always vibrating. And when you play, you get the value where you at when you play. So it makes that the sound is always a little bit different. So that's why I would ask, please, <laughs> and if anybody also is like me, I would like to have a button. You could just be besides BPM here when you click key triggering on or off because I believe that it opens up a lot more because you can even do grids with this. You know, If you do these grid uh, with the snap, it becomes really kind of a sequencer. If the grid equals you know, the value you want, you have this type of very interesting sequence, step sequencer in here. But I don't want it to be re-triggered every time. I want it to play 
and I'm going to get where I am in the grid somewhere. So, suggestion for the next version, next update. That's it, guys. Hope this is useful. See you soon. Have some fun. Make some music. Stay safe. Cheers.